Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture 26 of SBR IFRS 2 Share based payment. From the point of SBR exam, this is a very important standard because this has not been asked in your financial reporting. This is a new, this is newly introduced in SBR. So the standards which are uh, you are going through first time, which was not there in your financial reporting, has a higher chance of coming in the SBR exam, like IFRS 2. This is a very uh, detailed standard. So this standard is going to be pretty long enough with lots of questions. Okay, because it's new, because it's new, let me give you a warning. It's going to be a little complex in the beginning for you. But once you do questions and you keep on repeating questions, you will find this standard easy, easier. Okay, so let's start. We are going through equity settle share based payment and cash settle share based payment and some other issues. First, what is a share based payment? Understand this. When you buy goods and services, okay, from other parties, other parties could be your employees or your supplier. Okay, if you are taking goods and services from them, you either Pay them by issuing shares. See, this is share based payment. That means you are paying them in shares instead of cash. What do you do when you normally buy goods and services? You pay them cash. If you buy on credit, you pay them on cash later on after a certain amount of time. But here, you are not paying them in cash. You are paying them in shares instead or share options. Okay. Or second, you pay them in cash. But that cash payment is based on the share price. You understand? So it has to do with the share price. You either pay them in shares or share option or paying them in cash, but that cash is based on the share price. In these two ways. Okay. Now, there are two types of transactions. And IFRS, apply, IFRS 2 applies to all the share based payment transactions only. If it is cash based payment, IFRS 2 does not apply. These are the two types. One is equity settled share based payment. The other one is cash settled share based payment. Equity settlements like shares or share option. Okay. Cash means, okay, the amount of cash is measured based on the share price. That's the only difference. But you have to clearly identify a transaction in your exam whether it is equity settled or cash settled, very important. Why? Because the treatment is different. If it is equity settled, the way you account for it is different. If it is cash settled, the way you account for it is totally different. You cannot go wrong here in the identification of this. So first, let us finish with all the rules of equity settled share based payment before we touch on the cash settled share based payment both are share based payment but the way is different one is on share options the other one is cash but based on share price okay equity settled share based payment like giving them shares or share option the accounting treatment is okay you are issuing shares or share option this is the double entry you debit expense or asset credit equity why it's an expense for you you are debiting the asset if you are giving them something in asset okay it could be an asset or an expense credit equity see the easiest way for you to remember this is based on the accounting treatment if equity is credited it is equity settled okay whereas in cash settled based payment what's the difference there also expenses debit but you credit liability there it's not equity there the credit is liability okay that's the only difference in terms of double entry but let us not touch cash settle base now let us first finish with the equity settled only one thing at a time okay so the entry to equity is normally reported in other components of equity okay and remember your share capital is not affected until the share based payment has vested what is the meaning of vested that means you have not actually paid them right when you are giving a share option your share capital nothing is happening because it's just an option 
they have not yet exercised they are going to exercise it in the future if they exercise it in the future then only from your share capital you are going to make the adjustments until then nothing happens to the share capital okay now this is how you measure this is the measurement okay you measure them at fair value okay share based payment transactions are measured at fair value whether it is equity settle or cash settle does not matter that's why it's in bold these are the questions you need to ask is the transaction with employees or others providing similar services if the answer is yes measure the fair value of the equity instruments granted at the grant date that means if you are giving a share option what is the fair value of the share option at the grant date you have to measure it at that date if the answer is yes if the answer is no again another question comes can the fair value of the goods and services received to be measured reliably if yes then on that date what is the fair value you take that you measure the fair value of the goods and services received at the date they were received but if you cannot measure reliably no then take the fair value of the grant date take the fair value of the equity instrument at the grant date okay you need to memorize these things by the way you need to know these rules because when we come to the question you cannot keep on referring the table okay when the calculation comes now timing timing is very important okay some equity instruments vest immediately vest means you are exercising them you are getting you are entitled to receive it that is the meaning of vest okay in other words holder is unconditionally entitled to the instrument that means they are getting it they are getting all the shares or share option whatever they have been granted if it is so if immediately it has vested vested sorry vested okay transaction should be accounted for in full on the grant date on the grant date it has it has to be accounted for full we'll see we'll go through questions one by one don't worry you can always do the question and come back and check this rules you will understand this rules better that's the best way to learn rules in sbr do a question first you go through the go through my explanation if you are not understanding at the point moment when we are doing the question once you solve the question again come back you will be able to understand the rules better trust me this is how it works this is how i used to learn my sbr and it works it it's a wonderful technique okay next when share options are granted to employees okay there are normally conditions attached like they say you have to be in the company for 4 years 5 years right that's a condition vesting date what is the vesting date the vesting date is the date on which the counterparty in this case employee okay becomes entitled to receive that cash or equity instruments under the arrangement that is the vesting date now you have to recognize the expense right you the the expense recognized at each reporting date should be based on the best estimate of the number of equity instruments expected to vest this is based on expectation that this is how you expect the share options this much it will be vested in this year this much it will be vested on the next year this much it will be vested on the third year based on that only you recognize your expense in in all the years on the vesting date okay see vesting date is the date when you are receiving the amount the cash or the shares the entity shall revise the um, estimate amount to the actual amount vesting date is the last date okay after that you no longer recognize anything so the estimate becomes the actual amount actually that is vested now we'll be doing a question two questions before we move on to more conditions under equity settled share based payment before we move on to the test your understanding 1 and test your understanding 2 you need to go through this table when to recognize the transaction there are two dates this is the grant date when you have been granted the share options this is the vesting date when you will be receiving it right you will be entitled to receive it now the fair value determined at the grant date okay this one next from year 1 to year 3 this period is known as what vesting period 
and this is usually the same as the service period that means employee is there for three years needs to stay for two years okay it is the same as the vesting period okay then your fair value okay you need to charge that fair value over this vesting period based on the options expected to vest not the actual expected and when you come to the vesting date okay calculate the actual charge based on the number that vest actual okay vesting period it is the based on expectation vesting date the actual okay with this understanding now let us do the two questions test your understanding one i am not going to write the full answer it's there in your textbook take your own time and read all the answers in fact all the questions i'm not going to write the answer okay i'm just going to explain you how they got the figure okay requirement is discuss the correct accounting treatment for the year ended 30th june 2008 but this one was for first of jan 2008 so this is only for six months okay so here liminal purchased a patent what is a patent it is an intangible asset keep this in mind intangible asset is 38 you deal it according to is 38 keep this in mind purchased a patent the fair value of the patent was 3 million consideration transferred okay was 1 million how did they give this they bought this patent from someone third party but they paid it in its own one dollar share you see they didn't pay it in cash they transferred the consideration in own shares and on the purchase date the patent had a remaining useful life of three years because it's an intangible asset so they have given you the useful life for what purpose to calculate amortization it's an intangible asset okay fair value of one of the limits ordinary share was 3.5 on 1st of jan 3.2 on 30th june okay now you need to discuss the current accounting treatment okay first of all before you do anything always make sure that the ifrs2 applies or not if it does not apply then you need to go by i38 then some other standard whatever the standard applies if ifrs2 applies then only it you need to go through vesting period fair value of the grant date and all those things so ifrs2 in this case applies okay here ifrs2 applies why because they have transferred their own ordinary shares that's why now you have to recognize it at what you have to debit your expense at what 3 million the fair value of the grant date 3 million this is equity settled share based payment so you have to take it at the grant date the fair value which is 3 million right travel of the patent so debit expense 3 million credit or here it's an asset because it's patent credit equity 3 million but remember out of this 3 million 3 million is the fair value but you have already given 1 million shares okay so this 3 million will be divided like this 1 million shares equity shares the 2 million is the share premium understanding 1 million share out of that 3 million family 2 million is the share premium okay next you have to amortize the patent okay over is useful life so here 3 the fair value is 3 million this three you need to divide it by three years multiply by six months because it is only for six months from jan to june which will be 0 0.5 okay so this 0 0.5 you need to deduct it from three to get the carrying amount of the patent which will be 2.5 but this 0 0.5 will be charged in pnl okay this will be charged in the pnl and this is the carrying amount of the patent you understanding 
you have to take the farewell at the grand date that is first of jan okay so you don't see this shares even if the share price are given you don't see for it now test understanding two in your sbr exam you will see this type of question this is how you can predict the question okay so practice there are so many questions of this nature this type practice each one of them okay there are three years 2001 2002 and 2003 okay and on 1st of jan share options are 100 500 employees are working okay they will give you and the fair, fair value of the grand date is 15 okay so now they will give you the employees that expected to leave and that will actually live but for 2001 and 2 you have to work on the expected figure only for 2003 that is your vesting period actual figure the employees actually leaving okay that will get the grant option so now this is how you work for 2001 okay follow what i'm doing on the screen right now because this is how exactly you need to work every time you get a question like this only the figures will change that's it the way you do it is same okay how many employees are there 500 employees for 2001 20 employees leave you don't take it this figure you will need it in the vesting period that is 2003 we'll keep it and entity estimates that the total of 20 percent of the 500 will leave during the three-year period so you have to take out this 20 percent if you deduct 20 percent that means you are left with 80 percent 80 percent are there you cannot give those employees the benefit who are leaving you have to the options are only for those who are staying during those three periods that means 80 percent are staying 20 percent are leaving that's why we are taking 80 percent the ones who are staying okay multiply this with 100 because there are 100 options you see 100 options multiply this with 15 because 15 is the fair value each option is 15 you need to divide this you need to multiply this 1 over 3 why over 3 years from 2001 2002 2003 that's why 1 over 3 or just divide the whole by 3 so the answer that you are getting is equal to take your calculator Take out your calculator and actually start working out. You have to get 200,000. Okay. Next. So, wait a minute. Double entry. You need to debit this as an expense and credit equity. 200,000, 200,000. Moving on to December 2002. okay here also it's changed here 15 percent are expected to leave in 2002 20 are actually leaving but we don't see it now we'll keep it we are working on the estimate 15 percent are expected to leave that means employees are same 500 now 85 percent will stay 15 percent leaving means 85 percent will stay in 2002 this keeps changing okay by the way every year this figure changes 100 options 500 employees 100 options into 15 because fair value is at the grand date this time it will be into 2 over 3 for the second year okay this is how you work out the fraction the year this is the second year and over three years because total three years okay the answer that you get will be 425,000 you see there's an incre increment from 200 to 425 there's an increase in amount okay what is the expense that increment is the expense okay 425 minus 200,000 that is your expense which is 2 2 this is your expense this is debited and credited in your equity 225 now 31st December 
okay 2003 there is no expected figure you have to work on the actual amount but you have to take the 2001 2 and 3 so 2001 20 employees are leaving 2002 20 employees are leaving 2003 10 employees are leaving 20 20 and 10 adds up to 50 employees okay so from 500 you deduct 50 employees okay because 50 employees are leaving now again 100 options farewell is 15 into this is the third year divided by three years it will be 675,000 you see previously it was 425 you don't have to see this you have to see the total amount from here what was the jump 625 it increased by 250,000 675,000 minus 425,000 it is 250,000 increment of 250,000 expense increased by 250,000 so is equity okay now when you're writing this in the financial statement okay in your statement of profit and loss okay, statement of profit and loss this is how it will go 2001 2002 2003 the staff cost okay 200,000 hold the increment you are writing okay 225,000 and 250,000 but when you are going to the statement of financial position okay other components of equity OCE or OCOE here it will be 200 add up this two it will be four we have got up got the amount right and 675,000 this two if you add this you add and then again you add this so this is how you work out any question like this like this only you handle it like this now we are moving on to performance conditions performance conditions now from service conditions we are moving on to performance condition service condition means uh, let's say an employee have to be there in the company for three years two years before they are entitled to the share option right that is service condition performance condition means okay there are some performance condition that must be satisfied before they vest such as achieving a uh, let's say some amount of profit or project must be completed or the share price might, might uh, should be increased these are performance conditions performance conditions are of two types market and non-market market condition means where okay the market where one is related to the market price of the entity's equity instruments for example they will say that you have to attend this much of the share uh, your share should be this much right the price of your share should be this much minimum this much that is a market condition non market performance conditions are like, let's say your earnings per share or profit target they are not related to the market price of your equity instruments they are non market market means price of the share price non market means your eps or profit targets like that now this is a summary if you go through this summary that's more than enough okay for example vesting condition conditions required to be complied with for share options to vest at the vesting date you have to have you have to comply with this vesting condition if you don't you are not entitled the share option performance conditions are of two types okay one is performance condition the other one is service condition service condition means for each employee to complete the specified service condition let's say three years two years whatever performance are market and non-market market when you are taking the market conditions remember you have to take the fair value of the grant date fair value of the option at the grant date non-market means you have to okay they are taken into account at each reporting date when estimating the number of options likely to vest examples entity share price okay 
example achieving a profit target or completion of some project these are non market conditions now we are moving on to impact of performance condition see if it's a market based condition okay the fair value has already been factored the fair value of the equity instrument at the grant date it has already been taken into account therefore in the normal way you have to recognize an expense okay whether the market conditions are satisfied or not you have to recognize an expense for non market okay this must be taken into account in determining whether expense should be recognized or not when non market conditions are not satisfied you do not recognize an expense when it is uh, satisfied you recognize an expense but for market based condition whether you satisfy it or not you have to recognize an expense why because the fair value that has been given to you the fair value of the grant date already in that fair value this market based conditions has been factored that's why so whether you satisfy the market conditions or not expense needs to be recognized but for non market based conditions like your profit like your earnings per share you have to achieve it you have to satisfy it for you to recognize an expense now we'll be doing two questions before we move on to after the vesting date what should be the accounting test your understanding 3 market based condition okay so here on 1st of jan 2001 there has been 100 employees 50 are given option and they are they have to still work till 31st december 2002 and if the share price on that date is more than 5 so there are two conditions that needs to be satisfied service condition they have to be there till 31st december 2002 performance condition share price has to be more than 5 and share price is market based condition okay it's a market based condition so irrespective of whether you satisfy it or not you have to recognize an expense now fair value on the grant date was 1 okay the share price was not 5 it was 3 okay so on 31st december 2001 it was 3 but it was that the share price would rise even in 2002 it was unlikely that it would rise to 5 10 employees left during the year 31st december 2001 and a further 10 are expected to leave in the following year okay so now whether you satisfy see you have already satisfied the the uh, service condition okay does not matter whether you achieve the five or not it's a market based condition you have to recognize the expense in full so how do you do that 100 employees are there out of it 10 will leave during the year another 10 are expected to leave during the year okay into 50 options this you take the fair value that is 1 and it is for 2001 this needs to be divided over 2 years 2001 and 2002 we only want for 2001 which will be equal to 2000 okay so this 2000 when you recognize it debit expense credit equity 2000 2000 that that's it all the writing part you can do it you can read your answer answers are there in your textbook read it and you can write it on your own words my part is only the explanation part coming to test understanding 4 okay now this is a big question okay you have to read a little slowly to understand it for the first time once you understood the nature of this question the next time you get a question like this you can do it fast okay here 200 employees are there 3 year is the vesting period and option is volume of sales needs to increase max minimum of 5% okay there are maximum of 300 share option now we'll see if the sales volume increases between 5 to 10 okay on average between 5 to 10 100 share option if between 10 to 15 200 share option if over 15 300 share option you have been given a table here okay and the fair value at the grand date is 10 
okay now you have been given the three year okay employees leaving and employees expected to leave further the annual increase in sales volume expected and average you have to look the average while deciding because here they have given you average 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 okay so here it is 14 percent this is between 10 to 15 this is over 15 this is also over 15 so quickly you can decide how many options to vest here here it will be 200 here it will be 300 and 300 option okay your older thing is you need to know the employees you have need to work out the number of employees so for the first one here i will work out here from 200 you have to deduct how many employees eight are leaving in that year 18 are expected to leave further before the vesting date okay so you have to take 18 and 18 8 plus 18 that will be 26 so from 200 you have to minus 26 which will be 174 okay 174 here same 200 minus how much how much you have to take this 6 and 4 and you also have to take this 8 the actual figure when you are coming to 2005 so 8 plus 6 plus 4 which will be 182 okay now the last 200 you have to take all this three 8 plus 6 plus 2 which will be equal to 184 184 employees okay now let us work on this so here once for 2004 2005 2006 okay the three years 2004 174 employees 182 employees 184 employees multiply this with the options here's 200 option 300 and 300 okay fair value is 10 all the years 10 10 and 10 here 1 divided by 3 2 divided by 3 3 divided by 3 okay so here you will get 116 364 552 this is equity when you are recognizing expense 116 you have to deduct this from here only the increment 248 then from 364 how much it has increased to 552 deduct 188 right you can explain in your answer why you have chosen this options and how you got this as workings you can show that's it okay accounting after the vesting date you have to make no adjustments to your total equity after the vesting date it is only during the vesting date you have to make adjustments after the vesting date no adjustments to equity even if you have not met any of the market condition right that means your equity instruments do not vest like if you have not met any market condition you don't have to make any adjustments then also you don't have to make any adjustments to your total equity entities okay however have to transfer any balance from other components of equity to return earnings after the vesting date now we'll be doing a question before we move on to the next test understanding five beginner so here you have been uh, given an option for a three-year period of service okay 10 directors are there 
the number of options granted to each of the 10 directors at the inception of the scheme was 1 million okay now upon exercise of the share option directors are eligible to pay two for each share of one dollar nominal value now start of the year one this is the amount expected to vest end of year one and end of year two seven and eight and this this is the end of year three nine million that has been actually vested fair value of the option has been given okay now show how the option scheme will affect the financial statement for each of the three years you will be able to show that means the equity and the expense for the three years that you'll be able to do perfectly coming to b you have to show okay when option is exercised and when option is not exercised the accounting treatment the fair value of the share was five okay and all eligible directors exercise their options immediately fair value of the share option was 1.5 and all eligible directors allow their option to lapse that means they didn't exercise so first let us finish the part a okay it was for year one year two and year three okay so year one you have to take the end of year one not eight because this is the starting of year one you have to take the end of year one seven eight and nine so here seven million eight million nine million okay remember it is equity settled so you always take the farewell of the grand date which is 0 0.3 this one so 0 0.3 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 1 over 3 2 over 3 3 over 3 this is how you show the effect okay this is equity section this is expense equity you normally write 700 thousand one million six hundred two million seven two point seven million here expense will be seven hundred thousand okay one point six minus seven hundred will be nine hundred thousand and from two point seven to one point six to two point seven one 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 point one million okay next part b this is part a first one when you exercise okay see when you exercise you debit cash and you debit equity reserve when you exercise the option this is when you exercise the option you are getting the cash equity reserve you need to debit otherwise earlier it was credit but when you exercise the option it becomes debit okay and you credit your share capital here how much are you going to debit cash see you are actually vesting 9 million okay and this will be at a price of 2 because they told when you exercise upon exercise of the share option directors are required to pay 2 for each share so it will be 9 million into 2 okay which will be 18 million how much you are going to debit your equity reserve in year 3 it is this one because year 3 is the date when you are vesting it so 2.7 million share capital how much see share capital it's 9 9 million correct but the price is 1 dollar so it's 9 million into 1 so it's 9 million you are crediting the balance you see if you add up your debit side it will be 11 sorry it will be 20.7 but here on your credit side is only 9 so you need to credit share premium exactly the next is share premium and this is the balancing figure this is how you get your share premium which will be 
20.7 minus 9 which will be 11.7 now see when you are doing the double entry always always remember in sbr debit should equal to credit it should if it's not something is wrong you are missing out on something it should always so now if you add up your debit side that is your 18 plus 2.7 with your credit that is your share premium and share capital 9 plus 11.7 it will add up to 20.7 okay what about the second when you don't exercise the option when you don't exercise the option whatever is there in your equity reserve you can transfer to return earnings is your choice okay you can choose to transfer to return earnings but how much will be your equity equity remains at 2.7 million this amount this amount okay that's it now we'll be moving on to modification of the scheme modifications to the terms on which equity instruments are granted okay when modifications are done okay that means you are changing the terms and conditions of the share option scheme and this happens during the vesting period for example okay you might increase or reduce the exercise price of the option exercise price means this is the price that the holder of the option has to pay when you exercise the option so that so this can make the scheme less favorable or more favorable to employees second you might change the vesting condition so that this might make you more likely or less likely that the options will vest now if a modification is done to an equity settle share based payment remember equity settle share based payment then you have to continue recognizing the granted fair value in profit and loss normally you recognize the granted fair value right same way you continue to do it recognize the expense in the profit and loss okay unless the instruments do not vest because of a failure to meet a non-market based vesting conditions if you fail to meet a non-market based condition that time you do not recognize okay otherwise you recognize it normally in as an expense in profit and loss now if the modification increases the fair value of the equity instrument what happens it's an extra expense right for you so you have to recognize this extra expense how difference between the fair value of the new arrangement with the fair value of the original arrangement that means the incremental fair value how much it has increased from the past to the the new arrangement that incremental fair value you have to recognize it in profit and loss okay the extra expense is spread over the period from the date of the change to the vesting date now the vesting date will change it will go forward because now you have changed so from the date of the change till the vesting date you have to spread your extra expense over that period now we'll be doing a question on this modification before we move on to the next that is cancellation and settlement of the option test your understanding six modification Okay, so here you have been given for three years. Okay, and modification has been done at the end of year one. So year one, normally you will do change comes from year two and year three onwards. Okay, you have hundred options, five hundred employees are there, twenty is the fair value. Okay, year one, fifty employees leave, sixty are expected to leave. Year two. 30 leave 30 expected to live year 3 30 leaves okay at the end of year 1 they reprice so before repricing fair value was 10 after repricing fair value was 15 with this information we are going to do the calculation okay so here year one year one original year one there has been no change because change has been done at the end of year one so year one 500 employees are there from 500 
ओके फिफ्टी विल लिव सिक्सटी आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू लिव फर्दर ओके सो हियर यू आर डिडक्टिंग फिफ्टी एंड सिक्सटी मल्टीप्लाई बाय हंड्रेड ऑप्शन आते हैं फेयर वैल्यू विल बी ट्वेंटी इंटू वन ओवर थ्री ओके सो इट विल बी इक्वल टू टू सिक्सटी थाउजेंड टू सिक्सटी थाउजेंड दिस इज इक्विटी दिस इज एक्सपेंस Now moving on to year two. Year two, when you are dealing year two, first deal with original, then the incremental. So original will be five hundred minus fifty. So you have to take this fifty to next year. Okay, that is the actual. Next thirty are expected to leave. Thirty will further leave. Sorry, thirty leaves and thirty. Estimates that thirty will leave during year three. You have to take it in year two's calculation. So thirty and thirty. Hundred option. Fair value will be twenty into two over three, which will be five twenty thousand. From two sixty to five twenty, it's two sixty. But in year two, you also have to add the incremental amount. When you are taking the incremental, employees will be same. Five hundred minus fifty minus thirty minus thirty into hundred. Only the fair value will change this time. What is the fair value? They told before repricing it was ten. After it was fifteen. Only the incremental fair value. Fifteen minus ten. So fair value is five. Into now the years will change. Vesting period is now two. Year two and year three. So this will be over two years now. Okay, which will be ninety-seven thousand five hundred. Here also it will be ninety-seven thousand five hundred. We are moving on to year three. So year three original. Okay, when you are moving to year three, you have to take this fifty employees of year one, this thirty employees of year two, and this thirty employees of year three. Actually, that are leaving because this is vesting that time. So, five hundred minus fifty minus thirty minus thirty into hundred. Fair value will be twenty into three over three. Original, if you go, fair value will be twenty. The original one. The incremental. This will remain same. Five hundred minus fifty minus thirty minus thirty into hundred. The old change will be here. Fair value will be five. This will be three over three. Sorry, two over two, because you see here the incremental. So here it will be seven eighty. When you are taking original, you have to compare original with original. So from five twenty, how much it has increased to seven eighty? How much? Two hundred and sixty. So two hundred and sixty here in the expense. When you are taking incremental, it's one. Ninety-five thousand. So from here to here, how much it has increased? From ninety-seven thousand five hundred to one ninety-five, ninety-seven five hundred. Okay. Understanding. So you have to add this two for year three, the incremental and the original. Here also you have to add this two. cancellation and settlement okay sometimes an entity might cancel the issue option scheme or settle the issue option scheme before the vesting date and if this happens it is known as an acceleration of vesting earlier you were vesting this over the you are recognizing this amount over the number of years right over the years when the services are received the vesting period now Immediately you will recognize it. Whenever you cancel or you settle the share option scheme, immediately you have to recognize that amount. An acceleration of vesting. 
so any payment to the employees any payment made to the employees up to the fair value of the equity instruments granted at the cancellation or settlement is accounted as a deduction from equity right and if any payment is made in excess of the fair value that is recognized as an expense in profit and loss i repeat any payment made up to the fair value deduction from equity above the fair value expense in profit and loss this will explain you through our question before we move on to cash settled share based payment we are done with equity settled share based payment here test your understanding 7 cancellation and settlement how do you account for it in 31st december 2001 so here there are five directors grant a thousand option fair value at that date was eight and it has been for three years okay the vesting period is three years on 30th june 2001 they cancelled they cancelled they paid a compensation of 10 at that date the fair value was nine okay so now let's calculate this first find the total expense okay total expense will be how many directors are there five directors in 2000 options fair value at the grand date was eight so it is 40,000 this is an acceleration of right so you do not divide it over three years okay this is the total expense less expense this is for 31st December 2001 okay. less expense recognized in year end of 31st December 2002 sorry 2000 the previous year okay it will be 5 directors into 1000 into 8 but this will be 1 over 3 why because resting period is 3 years from 2000 wait okay but why here it's not 1 over 2 for 2001 because you have cancelled when you cancelled you did not divide it over years fully you have to recognize full amount becomes immediately you have to recognize okay here it's 13 3 3 3 3 this is an expense you have to write that write the increment amount only okay so this here it will be 2 6 6 6 7 you debit this and you credit equity okay debit pnl credit equity by 26667266667 okay now to make the following entry okay see any payment that has been made up to the fair value it's a deduction from equity any compensation above this fair value is written as an expense in the pnl so here compensation is 10 fair value is 9 so it's more than fair value that one extra okay so that one you write in the pnl okay so when you're debiting this is will be your accounting entry debit equity you have to show as a deduction from equity debit equity you have to debit your pnl also the extra one and you need to credit cash okay how many directors five directors into thousand options into nine this is the fair value at that date you see up to the fair value when you cancel nine not the grand dates fair value this time you should not take when you cancel you have to take the fair value at the date when you're cancelling the option it's nine not eight and you do not write over one or two or three years you do not separate over the years the full amount becomes you have to recognize the full amount which is forty five thousand here it's five into thousand into one why because compensation is 10 fair value is nine the difference only you have to recognize in profit and loss 
it's more than the fair value compensation is 10 fair value is 9 more than the fair value anything more than the fair value goes in profit and loss 5000 as an expense cash five directors in 2000 into 10 because this is the compensation so it's 50000 now you see you add up this two it's equal to the credit side debit has to be always equal to your credit side then only your accounting entry is correct so that's it for equity settled share based payment now we are moving on to the cash settled share based payment cash settled share based payment examples of cash settled share based payment sar sar stands for share appreciation right whenever you see this term sar know that it's a cash settled share based payment okay share appreciation right means where employees become entitled to future cash payment okay because of the entity's increase in share price from one level to another over a period of time the rights to shares that are redeemable okay when it's redeemable the holder are entitled to future payment of cash okay accounting treatment this is similar as equity based payment the only difference is here you credit liability instead of equity okay but you are debiting the expense in profit and loss or debit asset that's the same the only changes in the credit side in the equity settled share based payment you are crediting equity in the cash settled share based payment you are crediting liability now moving on to the measurement in equity settled share based payment the fair value is fixed at the grand date but when it comes to cash settled you have to remeasure the fair value of liability at each reporting date that's the difference coming to the allocating of expenses okay this is the same as equity in this case it is same as equity settled share based payment you are recognizing the expense over a period of the vesting period okay same as equity settled transactions now let us do a question illustration 2 okay so here till here is the same you have been given the number of employees leaving and the estimates that they leave okay 100 rights are there share position rights 300 employees okay over three years and you have been given the fair value at each date the only difference is this time for 2001 this is the fair value 2002 12 is the fair value 2003 15 is the fair value that's the only thing that changed everything else remains the same okay so for 2001 2002 and 2003 okay 300 employees okay from 300 you have to deduct for 2001 it is 40 expected to further they will leave and 20 are leaving so 20 and 40 okay into how many rights 100 under share appreciation right options into 2001 this is the fair value 10 into 1 over 3 okay this time it is not a equity it is a liability okay so here liability and expense expense will be same okay 80,000 here also it will be 80,000 coming to 2002 when you are coming to 2002 it's 10 20 and you have to take this 20 as well the previous year okay 10 20 20 into 100 into 12 because fair value change this time to 12 into 2 over 3 it's 200,000 but when you're writing it in the expense, only the increment from 80 to 200 is 120,000. Coming to 2003, the actual amount of 2001, okay, 20, 10, and another 10. 
so it's 20 10 and 10 into 100 fair value is 15 into 3 over 3 it is 390,000 okay from 200 to 390 it's 190 that's it next is the value of share appreciation right sar okay this can be exercised over a period of time okay and the fair value please understand the fair value of each sar has two values time value intrinsic value time value is easy because it is based upon the fact that share price will vary over time okay we all know that time has a value the other one is known as intrinsic value intrinsic means the cash amount that is payable it is the cash amount payable is based on the share price at that date okay so the fair value of sar compromises these two things intrinsic and time value now when sar exercised they are accounted for at their intrinsic value at the exercise date okay fair value of sar could exit its intrinsic value at this date why because sar holders might not exercise their right when they have the ability to benefit from future share price rises and at the end of the exercise price intrinsic value of sar will be equal to the fair value liability will be cleared and any remaining balance will be taken to profit and loss okay now we'll do a question on this test your understanding eight growler okay and this you have been given the share position right 200 500 employees are there and this is for two years okay 2004 20 employees leave entity expects the same number will leave in the second year during 2005 24 employees leave okay now out of this sar vest on this date 31st december 2005 okay that means they'll be exercised in 2006 and 7 on this on 31st december 2006 257 are eligible to exercise the sar in full the remaining will be they remain in they will exercise it on 31st december 2007 you have been given the fair values and the intrinsic value intrinsic value is given only for the last two years because you are exercising in this two years a is normally calculate the expense and the liability for the two years 2004 and 2005 b is when you are exercising okay you need to calculate the remuneration expense for 2006 and 7 okay so let us quickly do a you'll be able to do a okay should i do it for you or you'll be able to do it let's see okay let's do since it's a small working it won't take more than two minutes okay so first december 2004 500 employees are there out of 500 20 20 leaves and the same will leave in the second year so that means another 20 is the same figure they didn't give you the number so it's 20 minus 20 how many appreciation rights 200 into 5 because the farewell on that date is 5 you see here 5 into 1 over 2 so the liability and expense this is liability because we are in the cash settled share based payment remember so 230,000 230,000 moving on to 31st December 2005 same 500 employees out of that you have to deduct from 2000 to 24 20 and 2005 24 so 20 and 24 into 200 this time it is 7 the fair price 
and 2 divided by 2. 6, 38,400. The increase from 230 to 638,400 is 408,400. Okay, part A is done. This is quite simple. Coming to part B. Okay. See, actually out of 500, 20 and 24 are living. That means 456 employees are eligible for a cash payment. Okay, out of this 500, 20 and 24 are leaving. So, all you out of 456. Out of this 456, how, ma how many of them will exercise? 257 only. They have told, right? They will exercise. And the remaining, okay, remaining 199 will exercise it in 2007. Because they told remaining in 2007 will exercise. Now, For year ended 31st December 2006. Okay, you first start with the liability brought forward. It is this one, this amount you are bringing in forward 638,400. Then cash payment, you deduct your cash payment from this liability. What is the cash payment? The cash payment is when you exercise the option, right? 257, because they told 257 will exercise. So 257, how many options? Into 200 and you have to go by the intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is what? 7. Into 7, which is 350, 359. 800 okay once you deduct profit and loss is the balancing figure okay closing balance liability carried forward how much 199 see this 199 is for 2007 closing balance of closing balance of 2006 will be the opening balance of 2007 right that's how, that's why 199 into 200 of share, uh, share position right into intrinsic value sorry the fair value 8 it is this 8 that you have to take fair value when you are taking the closing balance because every year you have to remeasure here when you calculated this closing liability you took this the fair value when you are taking the closing liability, you have to take 8, the fair value, which is 318,400. So the balance, profit and loss is the balancing figure, 39,800. Now, moving on to year ended 31st December 2007. Liability brought forward. Yeah, it will be this 318,400. Here also cash payment. Know that this is the layout when you have, when you exercise options, okay? Share position, right? Cash payment, 199 into 200. This time it is 10 because intrinsic value and fair value are same, 10. But this 10 is the intrinsic value. Cash payments are based on intrinsic value. 398 you deduct profit and loss is the balancing figure liability carried forward remember liability carried forward at the end okay after this, we don't have any more years. Okay? It's nil. It will be nil. So here it is 79,600. So this remaining liability, you transfer to profit and loss. Okay? That's it.
replacing a cash settled scheme with an equity settled scheme yes it's possible you can sometimes modify the terms of a cash settled to equity settled right when you change the terms or modify the terms of the cash settled it sometimes becomes an equity settled so what should you do in that case ifrs2 says you have to measure the transaction by reference to the modification fair value of the equity instruments granted derecognize liability because you are changing from cash to equity and recognize equity at the and how do you recognize equity to the extent of the service that has been received up by the modification date and you have to recognize a profit or loss when you're derecognizing liability and recognizing an equity now other issues there are so many issues we are going to touch one by one first issue is a hybrid transaction hybrid transaction means where you have both equity and a cash you can either settle in cash or you can either settle in equity when you have that option that is known as hybrid transaction but the important question here is when you have that option who who gets who gets to choose is it the entity or the counterparty if entity has the choice whether in cash or equity then this is how you deal with it okay if entity has an obligation to settle in cash it's cash settled if no obligation it's equity settled this is simple but if the counterparty has the choice okay then it's a compound instrument you have to split the equity and the liability that is the credit entry okay how do you do that if the transaction is with the employees okay the equity element is calculated as fair value of the equity alternative at the grand date less the fair value of the cash alternative at the grand date both are at the grand date one is equity alternative one is cash alternative and you deduct if the transaction is not with the employees then the equity element is calculated as the fair value of goods and services received less the fair value of the cash alternative at the date of transaction not at the date of grant see it's there's a difference between these two go word by word okay if you need to memorize memorize it but only when you do a question you'll be able to understand these two things better now first this shows that first you calculate the equity element okay the liability element is calculated as the fair value per the cash settled method that means at the year end this amounts will be recognized over the vesting period okay now we are going to do our last question for this lecture before we move on to the other issues so the first issue is over that is hybrid transactions test your understanding nine okay here you have a choice of settlement calculate and explain the impact of share based payment on the financial statements for each of the three years to that that is 2004 2005 and 2006 okay here they have grant rights to 20 employees okay employees can elect to receive who has the choice here it is the employees not the entity okay either eight options 800 options or cash to the value of 700 shares okay on that date of 700 shares the fair value of the option is 19 at the grand date sorry 800 options or cash to the value of that date of 700 shares okay this is one thing and 800 option is a separate thing you have been given the share price and you have been given the expected vestas so here who has the choice is the important question you need to ask who has the choice of settlement entity or the counterparty it is the counterparty employees not the entity they have the choice so because they have the choice you have to do split accounting split accounting means what is split accounting you have to split the credit entry between equity and liability e l this is what you have to do first 
equity you have to work out with the equity section first okay how do you calculate the fair value just in the previous slide we went through that the fair value of the equity component is fair value of the equity at the grand date minus the fair value of the cash alternative at the grand date so what is the fair value of the equity alternative at the grand date at the grand date what is it how many options 800 options okay 800 options into what is the price of the option fair value 19 okay 19 which is 15200 now fair value of cash alternative at the grand date right which we, which is please understand this statement able to receive 800 options or or cash to the value on that date of 700 shares so on that date 700 share what is the price 21 share price is 21 so 700 into 21 you will receive this much of cash which is 14700 the difference you have to find of this two so the favor of the equity component that's what we are finding out is 15200 minus 14700 which is equal to 500 this is the fair value done okay and this is how you do the accounting for the rules first year ended 31st december 2004 okay first work out the equity component then the liability component then comes the double entry see equity component is okay go by the expected investors 2004 starts from here it's 20 20 is the expected investor options 800 so here 20 into sorry you have to take the fair value this is equity component so just now we found out the fair value of the equity component 500 20 into 500 this is only for the equity not for the liability into 1 over 3 Divide this over 3 years. That's it. 3, 3, 3 and 3. For liability, again 20, the investors, this time it is not 500, it is 700. This 700 shares you have to take. Into, you have to take the fair value. That is 27, the share price. Multiply that 700 into 27 because liability right it changes the share price changes every year so 700 into 27 into 1 over 3 here fair value will remain fixed for all the three years for equity but for liability this will change share into share price that's the only difference which will be 126 126,000 now the double entry will be debit pnl credit equity and credit liability okay how much is the equity three 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 and one hundred and twenty six thousand add up both the credit side will be equal to the pnl one twenty nine three 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 your credit side should always be equal to your debit side okay same way for the other two years also you have to do in the same manner year ended 31st december 2005 okay done now let us do the equity component so 
so equity component let us go to the expected investor that is 18 here for 2006 it will be 17 okay and the share price for the cash part 33 and 42 it will change okay so equity will be but fair value 500 will remain fixed the one which we have calculated so 18 into 500 the fair value into 2 over 3 6000 liability Eighteen into seven hundred share share price will be thirty three into two over three two seven seven two hundred. Now we are moving on to debit PNL credit equity credit liability. When you are debiting, sorry, when you are crediting equity, see equity before was. Four threes. So you have to only write the increment amount. Two, six, six, seven. And for liability, it was two seven seven two hundred minus one twenty six thousand one fifty one two hundred. So when you add up this debit and the credit, sorry, equity and liability, PNL will be one fifty three eight sixty seven. Moving on to the last year, 31st December 2006, equity, liability, equity will be 17 this time, the expected investor into 500 into 3 over 3, here it is 700, price is 42. Into 3 over 3, which is 8,549,800. Okay, the rest all double entry. I have left it to you, you'll be able to do it. The incremental amount only from this year. You have to compare. Okay, the same. So now we are moving on to other issues. We are done with all the questions for this lecture. The next issue is group share based payment. So, in a group, a subsidiary might receive goods or services. Okay. They might receive these goods and services from employees or suppliers. But the parent might issue equity or cash settle share based payment as a consideration. So, in that, IFRS 2 says it does not matter who pays it. Okay which one in the group settles the transaction or whether the transaction is settled in cash or shared doesn't matter but the entity that receives that good and services in a share based payment must account for those goods and services they are the one the one who are receiving it they have to account for that goods and services doesn't matter which entity in the group sets the transaction doesn't matter whether it is settled in cash or shares okay the one who is receiving the goods and services, they have to account for it. Third issue is disclosure. Here you have to describe the share based payment arrangement, number of share option granted or exercised, total share based payment expense. IFRS tool requires this disclosure so that it helps the users to understand how the fair value has been determined. Very important. Conceptual framework. Okay, next issue. See, when it is a cash settled, okay, for cash, we have an obligation to pay in cash, okay. Therefore, this missed the definition of an expense, okay. But when it is equity settled, when you are settling it in equity, there is no reduction in an asset or an increase in a liability, right. So, it does not go in accordance with the definition of the framework in the conceptual framework. Right? So, for IFRS 2, okay, according to IFRS 2, 
you are you i for us to request the recognition of an expense for an equity settle scheme with employees but it is not going in accordance with the definition in the framework how for cash settle it goes because there's no reduction in an asset or an increase in a liability even if you're settling it in equity that's why it's not going with the definition of an expense in your conceptual framework there's a conflict now that's it for ifrs2 okay ifrs2 is a big standard it has discussion question as well as calculation please make sure you cover both the parts both equity settle and cash settle both needs to be worked out okay we cannot predict what comes in the exam anything can come equity settle also could come cash settle also could come both also can come together right we never know but ifrs2 has a very high frequency of coming in exam so be very well prepared for it because this was not tested in financial reporting it has a higher chance of coming in sbr so summary we started with equity settled share based payment the accounting treatment debit expense or asset credit equity measurement measure it at fair value the grand deed performance condition okay there are two market and non market market conditions whether you satisfy them or not you recognize the expense non market if you do not satisfy you do not recognize the expense modification cancellations and settlements okay we have gone through all this rules you need to go through them over and over again for cash settle accounting treatment is debit side is the same expense or asset credit side this time is liability measurement this time you have to remeasure the fair value of the liability at the each reporting date because it keeps changing second value of share appreciation right it is based on the intrinsic value at the exercise date at the end of the exercise period ex intrinsic value will be equal to the fair value liability will be cleared off and balance is taken to profit and loss replacing a cash settle with an equity settle then hybrid transactions hybrid means where choice is there whether to settle in cash or equity and if this choice lies in the hand of entity okay and if entity has an obligation to pay in cash it's cash based cash otherwise equity based for count if the counterparty has the choice then it's a compound instrument and you need to split the equity and the liability component this is how you do it for equity okay if the transaction is with the employee equity element is calculated as the fair value of equity minus the fair value of the cash at the grand date if the transaction is not with the employees then equity element is calculated as the fair value of goods and services received minus the fair value of the cash alternative at the date of transaction liability element is calculated as at the fair value per the cash settle method as the year end this keeps changing okay fair value keeps changing for the cash group share based payment is the second issue where okay the entity who receives the goods and services they account for those goods and services irrespective of who in the group pays the transaction settles sorry settles the transaction or whether the transaction is settled in cash or share third issue is disclosure and fourth is the conceptual framework where for cash based it is meeting the definition of an expense but for equity it's not so that's it for ifrs2 thank you for watching and the next standard which is ifrs3 is also another very very important standard a must standard that is definitely going to come for your sbr exam so make sure that you stay tuned to my channel subscribe now if you haven't subscribed so that you get the notification of my latest video and please do watch my playlist my whole playlist is there for all the sbl lecture thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture